Introduction to Centripetal Acceleration. Caution, this may make you dizzy. An object in uniform circular motion, if you recall, is always changing direction. Therefore, its velocity is always changing, even though its speed is constant. Therefore, an object in uniform circulation is always accelerating, since its velocity is always changing. And the direction of the acceleration is what keeps the object moving in its circular path. So, uh, another reminder here, or review. When we had an object moving in uniform circular motion, in this case going counterclockwise, going from this location to this location, for example, its speed at this point was perpendicular to the radius, and we call that tangent to that circular path. We notice a moment later that the direction is still perpendicular to the radius and tangent to the circular path. So that's the direction of the velocity vector when an object's in uniform circular motion. An object in uniform circular motion is always changing direction. Therefore, its velocity vector must always be changing direction and the object must be accelerating. But what direction is that object accelerating in? To find out, we will take a look at two velocity vectors at two places on a circular path. By looking at these two velocity vectors, we can see the change in velocity caused by the change in their direction. That change in velocity vector points in the same direction as the acceleration of the object in uniform circular motion, which as you can see is toward the center of the circle. A cork floating in a container of water can be used to show the acceleration of the container. The cork moves in the direction of the acceleration of the container. The motion of the cork shows that the acceleration is directed toward the center of the circle. Center of the circle. Center of the circle. Yeah, baby! <laughs> As the automobile is turned left and then right, the accelerometer shows the acceleration to be toward the inside of each turn. So, we just saw that the acceleration is toward the center as an object is moving around in uniform circular motion and the velocity stays tangent. That's why an object goes around in a circular path is because it's constantly being pulled inward and changing direction. There is a fancy word for toward the center here, and that is centripetal. It means center seeking. So centripetal acceleration is acceleration toward the center of a circular path. This would be a great illustration and uh, definition to put in your notes. Here are some example illustrations of uh, uniform circular motion and the various acceleration and velocity vectors that go with them. Notice we have two different uh, uh, objects here rotating clockwise, going around clockwise. Note they're a little bit different here in that uh, the acceleration vector doesn't have to go down to, to the center of the circle. It can go beyond the center of the circle. It can even go, go way beyond the center of the circle. Uh, velocity vector is always tangent, and uh, you have to know if it's going clockwise or counterclockwise by how you draw the velocity vector. The acceleration vector, can't you can't tell if the difference between clockwise and counterclockwise with just the acceleration vector. And uh, so these two are examples of counterclockwise rotations. Again, the acceleration is always centripetal and center-seeking. And uh, please copy all four of these illustrations very carefully, drawing these velocity vectors perpendicular to these acceleration vectors and acceleration vectors going to, uh, through or toward the center. Also note clockwise versus counterclockwise on your notes. This video clip is designed to help you better understand the uh, difference between velocity and acceleration as far as what you feel. If you go back, and if you've ever seen the movie Top Gun, there was a saying in that movie uh, where the pilots said to each other, we feel the need for speed. Well, that was catchy in the movie, and it rhymed nicely, but it's actually wrong. 
You see, whenever you're cruising along, even if you're going a very fast speed, let's say you're in a car, a really smooth riding car, and you're going down the freeway at about 65 miles an hour, got some good music playing, the windows are up, if you're just cruising along, besides the little bit of bumps you feel, you really don't feel much, even though you're going pretty fast. Let's say you're flying on an airplane, flying on a jet, and you're going really fast, over 300 some miles an hour, but you reach cruising altitude, and there's not very much turbulence, and you're just flying along, you don't feel much, even though you're going very, very fast. You see, you don't really feel speed. You don't feel speed at all. You can see speed as things go by, and that makes you maybe feel something, but you don't feel speed. What you actually feel is acceleration. This may be fun, but I'm not feeling very much. Ooh. Until right then. You see, I was moving with a fairly constant speed, so I didn't feel much because, remember, you don't feel speed, you feel acceleration. Of course, when I hit the file cabinet, I felt something dramatically because I slowed down very quickly. I felt the acceleration. But there are two ways you can accelerate. One which you just saw, where I stopped suddenly, or started, or I could be starting. So you can accelerate by changing your speed, speeding up or slowing down. That's one way to accelerate. Another way to accelerate is to change direction. By changing the direction of the, your, velo your, your velocity, you are accelerating as well. So a change in direction, even though your speed may be the same, you can definitely feel. For example, if you've ever gone around a corner, let's say you cruise around a corner in a car, if you're going at constant speed, you still feel it. Because even though you're not changing your speed, you are changing your direction. And a change in direction is just as much of a change in velocity as a change in your speed. Therefore, you're accelerating and you feel acceleration. So you see, changing direction can be a lot of fun. And uh, circular motion, since you're always going to be accelerating, is always a lot of fun. Up to now, we've been talking about centripetal acceleration. That's the acceleration that's toward the center of the circular path that is taking this object and moving it around the circular path and continuously changing its tangential velocity. Um, and that is really the, uh, the only acceleration we consider from a physicist or an experimenter's point of view. We always look at uh, the object as an outside observer. We're outside of it watching it go around in circles and it's always being pulled toward the center, which is centripetal. However, if you are the object in circular motion, then you do not feel like you're going in. In fact, you feel like you're going out, away from the center. Um, just like when you're in a car and you go around a corner, it feels like you're getting going to fall, fly out of the door. It doesn't feel like you're being toward, uh, pulled inward into the car. Or if you're on a merry-go-round, uh, it feels like you're going to fly off rather than uh, be pulled inward. So again, if you are the object in uniform circular motion or in circular motion, you feel like you're flying away from the center. And the fancy word for that is centrifugal. And so we're going to take a look at some videos that show some uh, centrifugal um, forces and accelerations and how weird it is if you are the object in circular motion. But before we do, pause the video and take quick notes of this illustration and the definition of centrifugal. From a camera located over the merry-go-round, the ball moves obeying the law of inertia. In the accelerated frame of the merry-go-round, you can describe the motion of the object by using the idea of a fictitious Coriolis force. Try to ignore the rotation of the background and focus on the motion of the puck. 
it should obey the law of inertia and move in a straight line at constant speed. Does it? In this segment, a line is added to help you follow the motion of the puck. Now you can easily see that it obeys part of the law of inertia according to the pictures taken by a camera attached to the earth. It moves in a straight line. Does it also move at constant speed? What explanation can you give for your answer? If you are the object in uniform circular motion, or in circular motion, you don't feel like you're going in. It actually feels like you're going out. For example, if you've ever been in a car going around a corner, the car is turning, it definitely doesn't feel like you're going in. It feels like you're going out. If you didn't have a seatbelt and a door to hold you in, it feels like you would fly out. Likewise, if you've been on a merry-go-round or something like that, it doesn't feel like you're being pulled in. It feels like you're being pushed out. That outward feeling is a feeling, since you're the object in uniform circular motion, it's a feeling from the centrifugal acceleration. So really, you see, the only difference between centripetal and centrifugal, since it's the same amount of acceleration, it's the same magnitude of acceleration, is just whether you're going in or going out. And the difference there is if you are the object in uniform circular motion, you feel as if you're going out. If you're an outside observer, you would say, no, that person's not going out. They keep getting pushed in. So it's a small difference, but uh, definitely you would feel that difference if you were in circular motion. From the insider's point of view, an outward inertial force has come into existence because of the acceleration of the reference frame. This outward force can properly be called centrifugal force by an observer in the accelerated reference frame. The outward force is called centrifugal force by the person in the rotating frame of reference. The floor of the room is removed. The wall and its friction supply the needed forces to the people. To an outside observer, a rotation is seen to exist. The wall supplies an inward normal force to keep the people moving in a circle. The upward components of the frictional forces exerted by the wall keep the people from falling. From the writer's point of view, an outward inertial force has come into existence. This force is identical in its effect to an outward gravitational force. It is an artificial gravity. The writers consider themselves in equilibrium under the action of the three forces, friction, weight, and the outward inertial force they call centrifugal force. So, do you understand that? Y yeah, I, I think so. And Scratch's parting question and idea. And good luck as you strive for continuous improvement.